What if I told you you could build a really cool centre console for your sim racing cockpit with only a few simple parts and without any complicated tools or equipment? Well, you can, and today I'm going to show you how. So here's what we need. As always, links for everything shown in this video are in the description below. Some cardboard, just find a decent sized piece, this one I'm using is about 80cm tall by 30cm wide. A 45 or 50cm piece of aluminium profile with an M8 threaded end. This is usually a spare part you get when you buy track racer aluminium profile cockpits, but it can also be purchased separately so I'll leave a link to it below. A swivel joint and a corner bracket and some M8 bolts and T-nuts. Track Racer usually sells a little pack that contains all of these. Some adhesive Alcantara wrap. Make sure it's a decent sized roll that's larger than your piece of cardboard. One or two button boxes, whatever you have available. The type you use doesn't really matter. I really like these Sim Racing For You boxes because they're really lightweight which makes it easy to mount them. They also have a wide range for any kind of budget. Now I've wrapped these previously with some adhesive Alcantara, but you don't need to do this and it's not necessary for this guide. We're going to be mounting them with some kind of double sided adhesive. This Gorilla Tape creates a really strong bond, but you could also use these adhesive strips that mount hooks to walls. They're a bit cheaper, but the bond is also slightly weaker. Either is fine for this though. A marker or pen, some scissors and some Allen keys. And if you want to take things one step further, we can use this Elgato Stream Deck Mini, which I'll explain later. First, let's prep our aluminium profile to be mounted onto our rig. Take your swivel mount apart by undoing the two screws on each side. Screw the piece of the swivel mount into the threaded end of the aluminium profile. Now turn the profile on its side so that the countersunk hole is facing upwards. Take one of your T-nuts and slide it into the channel. Place it somewhere near the top, it doesn't need to be precise because we can change it all later. Now take your corner bracket as well as another bolt with some washers and fasten it to the profile. If you've done things correctly, the countersunk hole of the swivel mount should be facing to the right and your bracket should be facing upwards towards you. Let's also get our button boxes ready for mounting. Place some of your double sided adhesive on the back and make sure that there's coverage at the top and the bottom of each box. Don't peel off the protective film that's facing you yet though. Now to answer the question of where on the rig we'll be mounting the center console, we'll be using this vertical support piece which holds up the wheelbase mount. And we'll be using this channel right here which is going to give us some height customization of the console if we need it. Slot another T-nut into the channel somewhere near the top, again it doesn't need to be precise. Take the other piece of your swivel mount and screw it into the T-nut with another bolt. This time make sure that the countersunk hole on this one is facing the left hand side. Now take the aluminium profile and connect the swivel mounts together using the included screws. Make sure each part of the profile side is to the right of the rig mounted side. Now we can tighten everything up. These swivel mounts are designed to still be movable even though they're tightened, so you'll still be able to make changes to its position later by applying a little bit of pressure on it. Now let's mount our button boxes to the profile. Again, you can mount these whichever way you like as long as they're straight. I wanted to do something different so I mounted the top box sideways. Peel off the protective film on the adhesive and place it on the profile so that one piece of adhesive is making contact with the profile and the other piece is making contact with the corner bracket we mounted. If you feel the button box wobbling, that's because the corner bracket needs to be pushed up a bit more to make contact with the box. Just loosen the bolt holding the corner bracket and push it up until the box stops wobbling, then retighten. Let's attach the second box now. The main thing we need to make sure is that both sides are lined up properly. Now before we go any further, this is where you should jump into your rig 
and just make sure everything feels comfortable. Make sure the height and distance of the button boxes feels natural because you'll need to get all of this right before we start the next step. So it's starting to come together now, but we need to give it that three dimensional effect and make it look like the inside of a car. Take your cardboard and place it firmly up against the side of the button boxes, as well as the wheel mount of the cockpit. While holding the cardboard firmly, take your marker and draw a line downwards, using the edge of the button box to guide the marker. Now take your scissors and cut down the line. If you're only mounting the button boxes then you could just go all the way down to the bottom. But if you want to do that extra effect with the stream deck later, cut down to the end of the marker line and leave the rest like you see in the picture. Now we only need to wrap the left side of the cardboard as that's all we can see when it's mounted. Let's roll our adhesive Alcantara onto a flat surface with the white backing facing upwards. Then place the cardboard onto it like you see here. Cut a square around the cardboard and make sure that you leave a lot of extra space where you cut because we'll need to fold the Alcantara over to stick it to the cardboard. Now cut closer to the shape. Peel the white backing off the Alcantara and then place the cardboard on top of it, making sure that you leave enough space on all sides and corners. Turn the cardboard over and check for any air pockets and smooth them out, then press down firmly to secure the bond. Now fold all the edges over and stick them to the cardboard. You'll need to make a few small cuts near all the edges and corners so that you can do this. The Alcantara should hold on its own, but if you want to be extra safe with it, get some kind of tape and place a few pieces around to make sure nothing comes loose. Now clean the Alcantara up and it's ready for mounting. Place your new side panel up against the button boxes to make sure everything matches up. If you're happy with it, get some more double sided adhesive and place it firmly against the left side of the boxes. Then press your side panel firmly up against them and you're done. Now you can see just how much better this looks in our rig and it gives us that three dimensional effect of a car's footwell and centre console. And at this point I'd say pat yourself on the back because you just made a really cool DIY sim racing piece and probably saved yourself a bit of money and stress compared to doing it with wood or something else more expensive. But now if you want to take things that little bit further, let's add a stream deck to it. So take your stream deck and its included mount and set up the angle of the mount so that it's using the second lowest hole. Put some adhesive on each corner of the mount. I use blue tack for this because I need to remove the stream deck often so I can't have a permanent bond on it. Place your stream deck on the mount and press firmly on each corner. Then put some double sided adhesive on the back of the mount. Choose where you want the mount to rest on the console and then press firmly onto the aluminium profile. And now that gives our center console even more depth and gives us a lot more buttons to use in our races. You could also go one further now and mount a shifter or a handbrake in front or to the side of the stream deck. Well that wraps up our guide for today and the one thing that I hope you take away from this is that you don't always need to spend ridiculous amounts of money to add immersive effects to your sim racing cockpit. Excluding the button boxes, the cost of this project came to a little over $60 US and gave us a really cool center console that brings us a little closer to feeling like we're driving a real car. And remember that this is just the way that I built my center console. 
and if you think you could change something in the design to suit your needs, feel free to change the process. I'd love to see what kind of cool creations you guys come up with, so when you finish making your own center console, be sure to share it in our Discord so that we can all see what you've made. I'll leave a link to our server below. So hopefully this guide helped you out today, and if you have any further questions or something just didn't make sense, please just leave the question in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a great week, and I'll see you in the next one.